Okay. Um, my name is John Hart. I'm a, a PhD student here at the Electronic Visualization Laboratory at the University of Illinois at Chicago. And um, I'm in the Computer Science Department, and we're working on Quaternion Julia sets today. My name is Luke Kaufman. I'm a professor of mathematics at the University of Illinois Chicago. And as John said, we're working on Quaternion Julia sets today. And this is a Quaternion Julia set right here. Across the top of the, of the computer, we have shift to the right, shift to the left, up and down, zoom in, and zoom out. Rotate vertically, reverse, rotate around the vertical, and rotate in the plane. The arrow keys um, control the constant, with the uh, vertical arrow keys controlling the imaginary part of the constant, and the horizontal arrow keys controlling the real part of the constant. If I press this key uh, without touching anything else, uh, then the constant changes by 1 100th, in this case, in the imaginary direction. We can also change the rotation of the shift key. So let's just do a quick 10 degree rotation of this Julia set, and you can watch it change shape on the screen. Now, it should be Here mentioned. We're at 90 degrees. Right. It should be mentioned that this rotation is not, strictly speaking, rotating the Julia set in space, but no. rather. It's a rotation parameter that's related to the way the sets are constructed. It's kind of fun to uh, continue touring around here. Uh, in particular, if we went down to the, um, the sphere at the origin, there you go. Okay. Yeah, this is an interesting set because you've got all these bifurcation patterns. It's a sphere. It's one of the simplest Julia sets um, ordinarily, but when we rotate it in the complex plane, it sets up a uh, pattern in the quaternion set um, that's still a little perplexing. So it's, it's worth taking a look at what happens when we do those rotations. Um, let's try uh, taking theta down from 90 a little bit. In fact, we could, we could tour down. Well, that's a nice one. Let's leave it. So what happens when we talk about rotation here is that uh, we're really rotating the dynamics that generate this Julia set. Mm -hmm. We're not rot In this case, uh, with the sphere, we're not rotating the sphere at all. The sphere is still there as a sphere, but, but as we change the uh, angular parameter, the, the apparent dynamics uh, on the set are, are changing radically. And some of this looks like the weather to me. Uh, these bifurcations, these tree-like uh, branching points are, uh, are actually saddle points. A saddle point is, uh, is, a, is a point uh, on, on the surface of a saddle. So here's a saddle drawn, right. and, um, and here's the descending uh, curve, and here's an ascending curve, and you can right. sit on that middle part. And uh, what happens is that these two lines uh, at, the, at the saddle point are actually touching one another. Mm -hmm. But if we, uh, if we come above the saddle point, then we see two curves which don't touch. And when we go below, we right. see two curves which don't touch in the other way. So that drawn in a plane, you would see two curves near approximating the saddle uh, right. critical point. And when you go through it, you end up having pulled them apart the other way. Right. So the, the experiment is, let's go on the other side of 90 and see if these curves end up going the other way. And that's good evidence that we really are talking about a saddle point. OK, so here we're at the uh, minus side of the saddle point at 89 degrees. And you can see right here that we've got something similar to what Lou was talking about. So we increment by 1 degree, giving us 90 degrees. And the saddle points just touch. And we increment once more to 91 degrees. And we'll, lo and behold, the saddle points are facing in the uh, opposite, opposite direction. direction. So that's good evidence that we really are dealing with a saddle point phenomenon. Yes. Um, maybe we can make a theory out of this yet. <laughs> Why don't you uh, zoom in? 
to the eyes of, uh, to, of someone who's been in topology before fractals started uh, happening, this is a, a rather remarkable uh, situation in as much as we used to think of one saddle point at a time. But obviously, in this fractal, we're looking at this one, but the phenomenon is happening everywhere, all mm -hmm. over the place, duplicating itself. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a, it really strikes your imagination when you start to think about that. Mm -hmm. Now this doesn't look like too much, although it's interesting to see this circle here. This we can rotate it around so you get a better view. Is it in the complex plane? No. Okay, here's the complex plane. So it's not in the complex plane, as you can see. Uh, the uh, imaginary plane, the IJ plane, is right there. It's not there. And it's not in the uh, 1J plane. Where is it? Let's take a look. Nope, there it is. It, it's just plain weird. Uh, John and I are going to conclude with our Quaternion handshake, which is the, uh, which is the secret greeting of the Quaternion Society, of which we are the only members at the moment. <laughs> Uh, the quaternion handshake is based on the fact that, in fact, you've had the quaternions in your hand all this time. Even Hamilton didn't know this. The point is that you can represent a quaternion by rotating by 180 degrees around an axis. And um, so there are three axes that you can use for your arm. Uh, 180 degrees around this axis, 180 degrees around this one, and around that one. So uh, I is this, and J is this, and K is that. And um, Upon doing i times j times k, you get minus 1. And that is indicated here geometrically by the fact that my arm is twisted by 360 degrees. Looks quite painful, uh, too. It, it's <laughs> only mildly painful. Oh, OK. And uh, there's more to say about this, um, about this uh, fact that you've had the quaternions in your hand. But the handshake is, uh, in fact, uh, now available to us. I. Uh, whoops. Okay. I, <laughs> I. J. K. K. And then we just rotate shake back and shake hands. That's it.